Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot for Lang Syne? Happy New Year, everybody. We are making New Year's Eve ball dropping cocktails. That sounds not right. <laughs> Happy New Year's, everybody. Today we're making a New Year's Eve cocktail that you can use at your very own New Year's Eve party. We're gonna talk about how to make these little beauties. These are drink bombs. They are like edible bath bombs for your drink. You know, presentation is an awesome part of cocktails and it's New Year's Eve, you know, we're all kinda, yeah, they're all feeling a little bit. So you know what a bath bomb is, and that's a fizzy thing that you drop into your bath and it dyes everything crazy colors and, uh, they're expensive at that place, Lush, like 12 bucks a bomb or something, it's crazy. These are drink bombs, and they're made basically on the same principle, but with only edible ingredients, so they are food safe. The first thing you're gonna wanna do if you really wanna make them nicely spherical like this is you get these molds. These are bath bomb molds. I got these on Amazon. I'll provide an affiliate link in the pinned comment below. But if you use, the, you use these, you smash them together, and then that helps form real spheres. I guess you could use anything you want, but a sphere is a good shape because it lets go pretty well from a sphere. The recipe for this is fairly simple and you can tweak this once you understand like the basics of it. You're gonna need citric acid and baking soda. And your ratio of citric acid to baking soda will change the results of this a lot. I find that like if you go equal parts citric acid to baking soda, you can wind up with something that is very, very tart. If you lean too far in the other direction, it can wind up yielding sort of salty. So, so getting that right is important. Uh, I went with 200 grams of citric acid, 300 grams of baking soda, and then 400 grams of plain white sugar, because if it's 100% reactive, it's too much. It's just too powerful flavoring. And, and we want sugar in cocktails anyway, typically. And then you need some liquid ingredients. Um, with bath bombs, they use a lot of aromas and essences and things like that. Well, I went with bitters. Bitters wind up in a lot of my drinks anyways. I just sort of put together a mix of Peixos bitters with some orange bitters and a couple of drops of absinthe, just a little bit. Uh, and I get that ratio just right. It's pretty hard to predict what that ratio is going to be for you. Your humidity of your ingredients and your environment is gonna change out a lot. It's pretty sensitive. The thing to do is to throw it in and immediately start mixing it right away because as you will see, it starts reacting as soon as the this mixture is in water, and that's good. You wanna know that it's going to have a pronounced reaction, but you just gotta mix that in and keep mixing it until it kind of has a texture sort of like um, kinetic sand, if you are if you have a kid who plays with kinetic sand, or just like wet, wettish sand, that's about right. I used, for my mixture, about a half an ounce total of bitters, so it's, it's pretty dry, not a lot of wet ingredients at all. But without any wet ingredients, of course, you won't be able to bind these. The one other thing that I use in mine that you won't find in a lot of recipes is a little gum acacia. I used five grams of gum acacia here. That is because in most of these recipes, you're gonna find people using cornstarch and quite a bit of it to help it be a binder. I had this idea that, well, you know, gum acacia is in a lot of simple syrups, you know, gum syrup anyway, so I don't really mind it being in my drink. Cornstarch does not show up in any of my recipes. Um, and from what I've read, actually, I didn't even try it. From what I read, it's not exactly great in your drinks or food anyway. So I used gum acacia, and as you can see, I, I got pretty good results from that. You might want to experiment with different ratios depending on your needs. Uh, and then once you've done that, you've got some flavoring agents, which could be spirits or extracts or syrups or tinctures or bitters, which is what I use to keep things pretty simple on this go. You could add some pizzazz. I threw some luster into these, some luster dust. You could take some coloring agents, powdered coloring agents. Uh, one of the tricks I saw that bath bomb makers do is they'll make really tiny bath bombs of one color uh, of a very high reactive content, like, you know, using like a quarter teaspoon size and put that inside of another bath bomb so that when it gets to that part, it kind of acts like a jet to give the thing spin. Uh, that's a neat trick. That is some advanced bath bomb, drink bomb making techniques that are a little bit beyond my scope as a complete novice. I should say I'm a complete novice. I figured out how to make these things yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I played around with some flavors a little bit. Um, you could probably do a lot better if you keep working at it, and I will probably keep working at it, and I'll come up with some neater ideas from this. So we've made our New Year's Eve ball component for our cocktail, and we're gonna make something that I think of as being almost like an instant French 75, but not quite. I think this is an appropriate drink for New Year's Eve. And it's gonna be stirred in the glass. There's very little going into our mixing glass here. 
And that's because most of this drink's flavoring and sweetening and a lot of the components are coming from what we put into our ball, our balls. So I want to put in half an ounce of Coquille Americano, two ounces of London Dry Gin. I like Ford's here. We're gonna crack some ice in here and stir this. I know that's just two things, but this is sugar, this is a little bitters, a little bit of absinthe. We get some sour from our citric acid that's in there. We really, any more is gonna make this too much and it also kind of ruins what's really neat about this, the kind of instant transformation aspect. I'm gonna strain this into a brandy snifter without ice. And I would garnish this with a small sprig of fresh rosemary just across the top there. And then you could make these pretty early and keep them in the fridge. You want them nice and cold. When I serve this drink, I'm gonna give it to my guest with one of our cocktail bombs. I'm gonna count down to two midnight at the end of the party, at the end of the party, I don't know about you, my parties end at 12.01 on New Year's Eve. That's it, I start the new year on a new foot. You people get out. No. And we're gonna count down 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! The reaction takes just a second to get going, but I do find that these work a lot better in a wide glass so that it can get all the way around it versus a tall skinny glass. It kind of becomes problematic. And you can see I put some gold luster in there, so now my drink has turned gold across the surface, the whole thing. And there we have our New Year's Eve toast, the instant ball drop magic cocktail. Woo! <laughs> it's exciting because it's fizzing inside of your mouth like pop rocks. And one of the, my favorite things about this too is the rosemary garnish. Putting that right by your nose as you sip adds a, an herbal note to this that would be otherwise lacking. Could probably work some rosemary into the ball, into the cocktail ball, but we, we should have a garnish on there of some kind anyway. So, you know, we don't want to be totally uh, devoid of garnish, right? Of course, the gold is just there for show. It's New Year's Eve, we can get a little silly with it. That is a fresh, tart gin. I mean, it's a lot, honestly, if I'm, if I'm brutally honest with myself, it's a lot like a amped up Tom Collins. So this is a bit like, with that rosemary note, with just a hint of absinthe and a hint of quinine, because um, there's a little absinthe inside of my cocktail fizzer, and there's some quinine in our coquille. It's, what, what's so neat about it is that it is like reacting and fizzing and, and exploding in your mouth. It's a very experiential drink. It's something that you'd have at a gastro bar or something. I'm sure molecular mixology type place. I am just scratching the surface with this technique of making these cocktail bombs. I am convinced that throughout the year I'll be working on new formulations and recipes, coming up with new stuff. But for now, this gin New Year's ball drop toast is what I've got. And it's pretty good. I hope you guys are setting up for a really great New Year's Eve party. If you make this drink, I'd love to hear how you like it. If you use it to make a drink similar to this using the same technique, I would be really interested in hearing what recipes you come up with for this. I hope you guys are having a great holiday. I will see you on New Year's Eve. I've got something pretty wild worked up coming your way. So I look forward to what, seeing, seeing what people think about that. My barware is all provided by Barfly Mixology Gear. If you like the tools I'm using, I've got an affiliate link down there in the pinned comment. Check that out. Pick up some for yourself. My watches are provided courtesy of my very good friends at Crown and Caliber. If you're interested in watches, hey, there's a link in the pinned comment below. You should take a look. I don't have one of those little things, but we'll see if we can do it. Woo! Happy New Year! Woo! That's the sound of those party pop blower things. It's pretty. Woo! It sounds kind of like a man screaming in the woods, doesn't it? He's like walking around and he's in here. Woo! Happy New Year. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot for old lang syne?